Okay. I think we're live. Yay. All right. Um, mm -hmm. If you were watching live, I hope you're coming back to me. Um, <laughs> it's obviously in a new window, so I will... I will write that. Uh, anyways, um, let me get Natalie on here and I will, we'll just do it and see if people start to join. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hey, Natalie, how are Hi. you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so I was just telling everybody before I had to hop off real quick that, um, you played for me at 14s and 15s and then mm -hmm. back again at 50 or at 18, sorry. Um, and so at 14s and 15s, you were with me at, at Fort Bend Fire and then at 18s, you were with me at Force. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me about your, your history in volleyball. Like, give me your, your story. Okay, well, I started playing volleyball in middle school whenever they made us play. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Let me, like, keep playing. And so I tried out for my first team at Fort Bend Fire when I was 13. And then I just kept going from there. And I've played every position except for setter, so I've done it all. That's so, so true. I, I was yeah. just thinking about how you were a middle um, mm -hmm. when you came to me at 14s, and then you were still a middle at 15s. But by the time you were 18, you had were playing. Well, I guess when you were 17, you played a little bit of DS, and then you mm -hmm. came to me. You wanted to be an outside, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you played 18, or you played 18s as an outside. So, exactly. what are you playing in college? I'm a right side. A right side. All right. Yeah. All right. That's good. You yeah. like it? Yeah, it's it's like different, but it's fun because it's like not apparent. It's like so different hitting wise, like with your angle, if you're a right handed hitter and you're yeah. playing right side. But it's fun. Awesome. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I was a right side. That was always my my favorite. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed hitting right side because you got to. Well, you didn't get as many sets, but when mm -hmm. you do get the sets, you get kills, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, I think you get more kills. Yeah. Like your ratio but, of kill to yeah. attempts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, everybody comment below and tell me how the connection is. Can you hear us? Is it skipping? It looks a little slow on my end. And I just want to make sure that everybody is getting a good interview. I want to make sure you hear all the information. So if, if it looks good, give me a thumbs up. It's good. Okay. I'm seeing it's good. All right. Um, so you started in seventh grade at Garcia Middle School, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you went yes. to play on um, in high school at Austin High School in Fort Bend. Mm -hmm. Yay. And then now you're at, tell everybody where you're at. C Cisco College. Cisco College. And this is a junior college, correct? Yes. Awesome. So I, I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about your recruiting process um, and why you chose Cisco College and all of that. So when did you start recru your recruiting um, journey, I guess? Um, well, I'd say I basically whenever I think starting like my beginning of junior year or like late sophomore year I started going to like a bunch of like college camps and like all those like college coaches things where everybody goes and watch you play um, showcases yeah that Good. and then um I started really like getting into recruiting probably because I signed up with NCSA uh -huh. probably like the summer before my senior year and so that's when it all like really started it really started to take off mm-hmm and then in the summer before your senior year, what was your goal like for getting a commitment or having a college offer you um, a position on their team? Um, well, definitely get a like good scholarship. So if not all of what, it, wait, wait, most wait, of wait, what is a good scholarship? Um, 
explain well that just depending me. on how much like the tuition is compared to how much they offer me so I'd say if I have to pay like a little bit that's fine but not probably like more than half I got it so that's why I probably didn't want to play at a D3 because like my grades were good but I just didn't know if they were good enough for like a whole like academic scholarship right so that's kind of was ruled out because okay yeah, I really and so wanted. JUCO was kind of the like the same level as D three, but you were able to get athletic money. Yeah, and if not the same, because like I feel like it's really surprising how good you would think you wouldn't think JUCOs would be like as good just because you know it's a JUCO, but right, the they're actually I, I about yeah that. like you wouldn't believe like the first tournament I ever went to and played in. It's, like, crazy how, honestly, like, how tall these girls are, how, like, good they are. You really wouldn't expect it. So, if, honestly, like, we could play at the same level as a D3, they're, like, really good JUCOs that could, like, compete with a D2. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Awesome. So, you think you think you uh, went to Cisco College and you're still getting challenged in volleyball? Mm-hmm. Right? Definitely, good. yeah. It's not, like, something that you're not going down a level by doing no. that. Definitely Good. not. Yeah. Awesome. And so when did you commit? Um, I committed November of my senior year. So you committed before club season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that. Do you regret doing that? No, I, cause Good. I love Cisco. So even if there were other schools that like took interest in me later, I, it's. Cause you did yeah. have other schools interested in you during club season, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but you felt like you had a weight lifted off your shoulders when she made a commitment. Yeah. 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 And so you just got to play kind of for fun and to get better. Not mm-hmm. all the stress about college. Yeah. Good. Um, so you're a sophomore now at Cisco college and mm. yes, 2020 has been, you know, yeah. awful, well, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me about your, your freshman year. Um, so my freshman year. So you kind of go in and you're like, oh my gosh, you don't know anyone. This is like completely new. You don't know how it's going to be. Um, obviously in the first semester, because you get there like a month early and then you have like three a days where you practice and work out like all the time. That was kind of hard, but going into season, um, it's like, it's a lot of fun and you get so close with your team. So it's really nice so that you like have friends for the rest of the year. Like you don't have to worry about, Oh my gosh, am I going to have friends? Like, am I going to be alone? That's not going to happen. Everybody gets super close. It's like this. It's like you're in a sorority, but it's your team. Right. I love that. I've heard that. That's how I used to describe it too. It's like your own sorority. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of, these people are kind of forced on you, but at the same time, they're people that you want to get close with because they're your teammates. So Exactly. And you like yeah. them because they like volleyball just like you, right? Yeah. Like, they understand you go through the same stuff. So. Yeah. Perfect. So, how – you said you had three a days. Mm-hmm. Do you have the same coach now that you had then? No. So, um, my coach from last year retired – so we got a new coach this year, the same, and, like, a new assistant coach, too. Yeah, so they're definitely, like, different because, obviously, my coach last year, she was kind of on the older side. She's more old-fashioned with stuff. And um, my new coach this year, he's um, he's really, like, about, like, new stuff. Like, he knows how to do everything. He's coached for so long in so many different environments and places. Yeah. So he's pretty experienced in... He's a really, he is really, and he was in the Marines, so you can guess what our workouts are like. (laughs) Oh, Um, man. But he's a really chill and, like, really understanding guy, and he's a really great coach. Good. Um, Sorry. Bo's going crazy. Um, Did you, I'm talking about how much you played your freshman year. Um... Well, it it's just depends. Like, so everybody plays in the beginning and scrimmages and stuff. When season actually started, there were like, so there were 20 people on the team. Whoa. Like people. eight people play. Yeah. We had a lot of people last year. Um, and 
I guess I played sometimes, not all the time, because there were like sophomores at the time that played over me as a right side. And so I understood that because they were like, they were good. And um, I played like, sometimes I'd go in, sometimes I wouldn't. It just depended. Yeah. Um, so you, you guys didn't have a season this year, right? Like a legit season? You just played um, some scrimmages? Yeah, so far. But next semester, we're having our actual season. So, in the how many scrimmages have you had this year? Um, three. Three. So, how much have you played? Oh, every time. Every Good. Yeah. Yay. Time. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And you are now the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the top dog, right? Like, sophomores are kind of the, the big man on campus-ish, I guess. Yeah. Is that the word I'm looking for? And yeah. uh, how have you seen yourself leading the team? Oh, well, it like all, yeah, it all starts from like warm ups to like during workouts when everybody's like struggling and you're like, okay, guys, come on, we can do it. <laughs> um, putting up the net, like it's, and even like just on the court, because I think there, it is different for if you, what you know, what to like playing in a college game is different than a high school game. So can you, you can like that? really tell the, um, okay. So I feel in high school, it's just a lot different because you kind of have people from, it's not all, you're, you're not all at the same level. Like you have a bunch of different players at different levels because they're like younger players and stuff. It doesn't even matter yeah. if you're on varsity. Um, but these people were all like chosen to be on at your level, your type of team, like challenging you. So, and the atmosphere is just different because it's not like you've been playing, you know, people in your area, you know what they play like if you play with them. Right. And you don't know any of these people. So it's completely different. And it's just, it's a lot more intense. I would Good. Say. I mean, yeah, it, you're right. It's, um, Everybody was chosen to be at the same level or mm-hmm. to challenge you, like you said. Um, and, and it was a, the coach's choice to put that person and put you on their team and mm-hmm. how you're going to benefit them. And so it's, it's kind of, it's a little more cutthroat in a way, mm-hmm. but not in like in a bad way, right? Like mm-hmm. you work hard and practice every day to be able to play. Um, yeah. And so that's awesome that you recognize that. Mm-hmm. Um, Well, since you're not playing right now, we don't really have a whole bunch to talk about you playing, but I'm really eager to see you play next semester. Um, So let's talk about what it's like to be a college athlete, like Mm -hmm. as a student, a student athlete, I guess is what the word I was looking for. Um, How many classes do you take or credit hours? Um, so you're required to take 12, but no one really takes 12. Honestly, you'll probably be between like 14 to 18, most likely something like that. And so let's just say 15 hours. How many classes is that? Um, it's probably going to be like three or four. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Probably like most likely four, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. So, um... And let's go back to last year, because this year, a lot of your schooling was virtual, right? Uh, yeah, but we still went to face to face to face classes. But yeah, a lot of the work was online. So last, last year, what was a day <laughs> in the life of Natalie Otto like? Well, or a week, I guess, because you don't have the same classes every day, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you usually have your classes, you have like Monday, Wednesday classes and Tuesday, Thursday classes. Cause we don't have class on Friday, which that was, was nice. definitely a perk. It was so nice. That's how it was um, when I was in college. Yeah, it's great. But, um, usually you either have like an 8am class cause you have to practice in the afternoon. So you can take no afternoon classes. Right. So you're usually getting up 8am or 9:35 or your usual classes. You probably have one or two classes that day, depending on your schedule. And then uh, you go to lunch. And then after lunch, you have practice. What time is practice? practice or a game. Um, last year, our practice was at like 1.30. But this How year, it's a different time. But. How um, early are you at the gym? Oh, well, you want to get there because they want the net set up and you warmed up by practice time. 
Okay. So you probably have to get there like 45 minutes before practice. Okay. Do mm-hmm. you go to the training room before practice? Um, only if, I mean, if you're like hurting or anything, I am not usually that bad. I've never really had a problem with injuries, but I know a lot of people do. And especially you get ice after. And they take care of you, right? Like Mm -hmm. not, not so much if you're injured, but more like, you know, you're sore from three Mm -hmm. days or whatever. You can go in there and they'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're constantly looking out for your health and how, because they don't want you to not play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is really nice. I always, I mean, I lived in the training room. But <laughs> one, because I liked STEM. Two, because I liked heat. And three, I like to get my ankles taped instead of wearing ankle braces. So, um, yeah, I was always in there. But um, that's good that they're always keeping track of you and knowing that you're okay. And that's really great that you're not injury prone. So you're out of there most of the time. Um, during preseason or I guess, do you guys lift weights during the season? Um, uh, not really, not during season, definitely in the off season, but on it sometimes, I mean, not all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. how much stronger do you think you've gotten since you went to college? Oh my gosh. Especially this semester because he knows what he's doing. Um, yeah. definitely. Cause we just, so we did Max's like your beginning and then after, Yeah, I definitely like went up and everything like at least by 30 pounds. We did like squats, bench press. Good job. um, Yeah, it was we went there like you go to the weight room twice a week. You do conditioning twice a week and you have practice six days a week. Six days. Uh, That's oh, (laughs) I know. Even in. Yeah. Yeah, So So how do you think practicing or. Do you think practicing six days a week has is affects your schooling at all? Like, do you have study hall? Do they do you meet with an advisor on a regular basis? Like, how do they support you in being, you know, the best student that you can be? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, last last year we definitely had study hall. Um, it was more during the season, I would say, because that's like harder to get your study time in. So they wanted to make sure it's for about a couple hours a week, probably like if it's like two per day, like after practice you go. Okay. Um, but this year he's more like, um, you can take care of it yourself. You can study on your own time. I'm not going to make you unless your grades are slipping, then I'll make you have study hall, but Honestly, yeah. so since you don't take like a like boatload of classes, um, you usually have enough time because after practice, um, you have maybe even at like the weight room, we're out of there by seven. So you have like a good amount of time to study before like going to bed. And if you don't have class that day, you can study then. It's just different times. You always find the time. So you're a pretty disciplined student. Would you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Would you say all student athletes are? Definitely not. No. No, so, I know a lot of my teammates. Yeah. They're just... So something like study hall helps you be disciplined if you're not mm-hmm. a disciplined student, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And their goal as a, a program is to make sure that all their student athletes are passing and getting good grades and then graduating, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't want you to not graduate. Yeah. Yeah. So... um what is your, like, what's gonna, what's coming next after season next semester? Where are you going? Um, right now I'm applying to different schools. I either want to go to UT or A&M just to study, I think, because I knew when I picked a JUCO, um, that's another reason why I picked a JUCO. I, I knew that I only wanted to play for two years because I wanted to get, like, half the volleyball experience because I love volleyball and then half like the normal college experience. Yeah. Like join a sorority if I want to, that kind of stuff. So do you think you will? I'm not sure yet. I don't know. (laughs) You've already had kind of your sorority experience. Exactly. I'm like, I already have sisters for life. Right. So yeah. When you went into the, to the JUCO situation, you knew like, I just want to play volleyball for two years Mm -hmm. and then I want to go to big time university. I want to do the big time school stuff. I want to go to the football games. I want to be an adult and in college and living in a city or 
at A&M or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Uh, that's what I tell a lot of athletes. I'm like, you can do both. You can, yeah. you, you can go to JUCO and play because you love volleyball so much, at least for two more years. And then you okay. can transfer over and do, um, you know, just being a college person. Like you don't have to be, you don't, I don't know. You don't have to do that for four years. Yeah. Um, so do you think being a college athlete and then transferring into a university that will help you be more successful um, at the big time university, like having the ground that you did as a, at a, as a student athlete? Um, yeah, I think so. It'll make you more disciplined because you were able to study when you didn't have all this free time. Now you have all this free time. I think it'll even help like if you want to keep working out, like you already know all this stuff. And if you um, even want to play like on the club teams at a university, like you're even in like a better situation for that because you might even be like the best one on your club team at That's your true. university. Yeah, I forgot about club. I don't, <laughs> I, I mean, I, um, I'll explain that. Uh, the big universities have the obviously the volleyball team that the school pays for them to go or to play for. Um, but then if you, you know, let's say you can't play at Texas or you can't play at Texas A&M, you can go and play on their club team and you mm -hmm. pay a small fee and they run two seasons. They run a season in the fall, if I believe, and then a season in the spring. And um, you, you make a team, you play, you like travel to all these other universities to play other universities teams. Um, and it's, it's, it's just obviously not as much of a commitment, but it's an opportunity to continue playing volleyball at a better level than um, playing for the intramural league or whatever mm -hmm. through the rec center. So that's, mm -hmm. I forgot about club team. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. is, do you think you're going to try and do that? Um, I haven't decided. But it's an option. Decided. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and like awesome. all the schools that I'm applying to, like honestly, like most of the schools in Texas, their club teams are really good. Yeah. We, at uh -huh. Texas State, the girls were really good, um, and they mm -hmm. actually had a boys' club team too, which was mm -hmm. fun. I like tried to coach them when I was a freshman, <laughs> and that was a joke. But it was fun because I traveled with them to A and M, and you, you, I saw these big tournaments with. And again, I was not exposed to a lot of men's volleyball at the time um, mm -hmm. until I went to college because in Houston, boys just don't play, um, mm -hmm. and so it was fun to the girl and the girls' team and the boys' team. Uh, they did a lot of stuff together. I don't think the girls team liked me too much because I was on the actual volleyball team, but um, they didn't like me being around. But yeah, it was, it was, they were, it was a fun time and I wasn't even a, like on the team. Uh, so really quick, I mean, I'm just going to put this out there. If anybody has any questions for Natalie, uh, she's more than happy to answer. You can type them in the chat below while we talk for like another couple minutes. Um, and then I'll ask her because I can see them. She can't see them. And I'll ask her the questions if you have any. And then, Natalie, what do you want to major in? Um, in big time. Or like, what, how does the process work when you graduate you, JUCO and go to university? Like, talk to me a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So you pick out your major um, at your um, junior college, obviously. But... And then you can take classes, like, based off of that. But honestly, they don't have, like, the broadest, like, widest selection. Um, you'll find something, but it's not, like, a lot. Um, but so what will you usually, graduate with from Cisco? Um, well, I chose my major as kinesiology, and that's not what I want to do anymore. Oh, but no. <laughs> I know. But it's, like, it does. So my counselor said it doesn't really matter because – you either graduate with an associate of, well, that's, this is what they offer at Cisco, an associate of arts or an associate of science. Uh -huh. That's what they mostly look at. Okay. And um, I'm graduating with an associate of arts because the science classes are difficult. So They're difficult. Yes. Yeah, so um, that's what I'm doing. And um, basically that's like fine. Like you can then you can like that can take you anywhere you can do anything with it so yeah it's so what do you want to major when you're done with college um I want to go into engineering engineering nice yes. 
Yeah. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to graduate from Cisco with an associates in art or mm-hmm. associate associates of art. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to go to wherever and you're going to try and um, graduate with an engineering degree. Mm-hmm. Do you know what kind of engineer? Um, I'm leaning towards either environmental or civil. Okay. Something like that. Mm-hmm. I was always told I should be a civil engineer, but I didn't even know what an engineer was until I graduated college. <laughs> so you're way ahead where I was. Um, that's awesome. Um, oh, we talked about this on Monday. You said you wanted to mention it. Um, you do work study. Is that oh, a thing? Yes. Explain what that is and tell us what you do. So um, every athlete on campus. So number one, your coaches don't let you get like real jobs you can't like go work at like a fast food place in the town that's not they're not going to let you do that because it takes up too much time and so they'll give you the opportunity if you want to make a little extra money you can do work study um or they also have like they let you have like student tutors for classes Mm -hmm. and so um for work study you basically your coach is kind of your boss and you just do like work related, like maybe you like do your team's laundry, you like mop the floors, something you do cleaning, stuff like that or organization. Um, But if tutoring, so say your grades are good enough in a certain class, maybe your professor will email you and be like, hey, do you want to be a tutor? And so um, you can make money like that too. You can work um, your schedule around that for, since you have practice, class, all that, you can still have time to um, be a tutor. Same with work study. You do it whenever you have the free time. So, so you it's get a paid good, to tutor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get paid for both and it's, it's, it's nice. What do you tutor? Um, I tutor math. Math. All types of math because I've taken um, like, five different maths so Mm -hmm. you can tutor all of them once you get like an a in them so if you like pass all them well then you're allowed to tutor them or you can do like a group tutoring awesome that's so cool Mm -hmm. i didn't do any of that (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i I have a story about the study hall thing i'll tell you another time but um well nobody's asked any questions so uh (laughs) It's been, we've been talking for 27 minutes and we have, I think this has been awesome. I want to thank you so much for being here, for taking the 30 minutes out of your Thanksgiving break. Uh, well, actually, you're not even going back to school until January. I'm not. Is that right? I'm not. Thank you for having me, though. This was fun. Yeah. Um, maybe in the spring when you are actually doing some games, you could come back on and let us know how it's going. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, sure. I love it. Um, well, have a great gloomy Saturday, unfortunately, <laughs> um, and um, stay safe. Yeah, you too. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. So that was Natalie, and uh, how awesome was that? I loved it. She is a great girl. I have known her for so long and um, her mom and I are friends now. And I just love making those relationships with the girls that, you know, to me last forever. And so hopefully when she's done playing or not playing, but being in college, she'll come home and get a job in Houston and want to coach for force. Uh, She is a diehard volleyball um, player. She loves volleyball. And so um, hopefully she'll be a part of force family once again And I want to thank you all for joining me live on this Saturday after Thanksgiving. And I will see all of our club players tomorrow for pictures. And um, then I'll see everybody at the, at practice on Monday. All right. Thanks guys. See you next Thursday. Yeah. See you next Thursday live on Facebook. Bye.